Hello, today we'll be making a chase cam out of some very inexpensive parts that you can get at your local Walmart, um, you know, other than the camera itself and the components associated with the camera. You can get all the other components typically at a, like a Walmart. They're all shown here in the picture. Um, I seen this video elsewhere on YouTube on how to make something similar like this. I just wanted to do it myself, see if I can do it and see how it turns out. Uh, see about the quality and <clears throat> how it flies and how it, uh, how steady I can make the thing. So uh, first off, you need like a bottle like this. Um, I chose this one. It's a two liter bottle is what you're looking for. And I chose this one in particular because it has this little tapered edge here that will kind of hold it all together better rather than something that's perfectly flat up and down, which would uh, it'll tend to fold inward easier. So you want it more rigid. Um, then we have some rope here. A uh, very thin rope to hold, the, suspend the chase cam from your wing um, to the camera. Uh, also, this will be used as like a um, for a second purpose as a, like a little tail hanging off the thing to balance it out and keep it straight. Um, over here, this is like an L bracket um, that will be used um, to connect basically the camera and the bottle together. Um, these are the screws that will hold it together. Uh, and this is a little device here, it's like a little S bracket here that presses inward where you can clip clip this onto your wing and then on this end we'll be clipping these which will be the weak link and these couple of rubber bands will go on here and then they'll tie also to uh, the rope over here so if the rope uh, if the rope gets snagged or the chase cam gets snagged on a tree or something it doesn't tear your wing out of the sky um, so you want this a weak linked link to break uh, the camera free just in case something gets snagged and then this just clips on there clips onto the the rubber band and this end clips onto your wing right here and then over here you got your camera equipment uh, i'm showing a gopro 5 i'm probably not going to use that i'll probably get a different gopro um because i need another one it'll probably be a sessions GoPro, which is smaller and lighter for this chase cam. It'll work better that way. Uh, but those are the parts you need, and we will try to put this thing together. Okay, the next thing you need to do is cut a hole or drill a hole in the GoPro base. Uh, this little black piece here that holds the GoPro uh, fixture onto uh, the base itself. So it's the base. And this is kind of the L bracket, how it goes. This will hook up like that, the, the bottle. Um, so what we need to do, <clears throat> take the base off like so. We need to drill a hole. We need to figure out roughly where we want the hole. So you take the L bracket and see where the hole is. And I want to have it just like that, basically. So I want a hole that starts down there, right below where that that drill that hole is right there and I marked it off on the on the base here <clears throat> so get it all lined up and then you drill through um, drill on go right down the center because you got this little channel here you have to get right on a channel dead center and it won't work Of course you want to have it the right size of the screw you're using. I'm using this 
a countersink tripe type screw. That's what you want to use because you want the head to be underneath. Um, so you go like that, it goes through, but you want want it counter you need to countersink it. So what you do is you take your other another bit out and take the original bit out that you drilled with, you don't need that anymore. <clears throat> then you take a larger bit. Plug that in. Of course, it's uh, much longer than the other bit, so I have to readjust the drill for countersinking. So you want to hit it dead on again. I want to get it countersunk so that the head of the screw actually goes below, right at this level of this plastic right here. So take it. Start it up again, get it dead on. Can't do it the other way. I should have the camera on the other side, but hit it dead on, and then down you go. And you don't want to go all the way through, obviously. You just want to countersink until the head of the screw goes down below the surface. So then, when the this gets clicked back in there, it's not going to bump into the screw, the screw head when it's all assembled together. That's how you do that part. So there's yeah, there's your finished product, uh, drilling a hole in the base of the GoPro. It's countersunk low enough where the GoPro uh, holder will just slide right into place right over the top of that screw head. So when you're assembling this, uh, this stuff together here, um, the L bracket onto the, uh, the fixture, GoPro fixture, you want to make sure you use nylon insert lock nuts um, to lock this thing together because it'll bounce around and be a lot of vibration. And it could come apart on in your GoPro just fall down to earth and you'll never see it again. So you want to make sure that's locked into place and, and solid so you don't lose it. Next thing you want to do is to drill a hole in your bottle cap to go through, uh, run a screw through the bottle cap, through the L bracket to hold the bottle cap, to hold the whole bottle in place like this once it's assembled. So you have to drill a hole right through here. Um, so get the right screw bit or drill bit and then try to drill directly into the center. <clears throat> it's kind of eyeball it. It's through. Okay. That's it. That's all you need. So the screw that I'm using in, uh, to go through the bottle cap and hold that in place to the L bracket, it's a different screw. It's a pan head type screw versus the uh, flat Phillips machine head, which was used for the GoPro uh, base. Um, that was used for a special purpose, so the head goes down below the, the surface. So the, uh, the GoPro fixture slides over the top. Uh, so you want a pan head on here to get as much holding power on the cap as possible so it doesn't pull through. Yeah, also, it would be good to use uh, washers especially on the, the plastic cap because it could potentially pull through, not necessarily pull through, but it'll, it'll deform and the, the bottle may sag um, when it tries to hold on. So I would use a uh, washer similar to what I was showing here. So at this point you should have your uh, chase cam assembled. It should look something similar to this. Um, as you can see I went and got a GoPro Sessions camera, uh, it's smaller, lighter. Uh, the bolt should be run through here, through the base, uh, holding uh, the L bracket there, and the L bracket attaches here to the cap. Um, I have made, I'm going to attempt two designs, so this will be one and this will be another, these combined. Um, this one, I do like um, 
pretty traditional, some people are doing. Just <clears throat> cut input air holes, um, four input air holes here, and then cut off the back part of this. And then air will kind of flow through it, and then we'll attach, attach a tail to it. Um, so, uh, cut that one up like that. This one I'm going to do a little bit differently, a different design. So, I'll have one that's a closed and sealed, and it'll look just like this one, except this one I'm going to cut off the front of this and attach it to the back of this. So it'll be completely sealed um, rather than open style like this one over here uh, where air flows through it. I'll have this thing sealed off. And we'll see how that works. I'm not sure how that'll work, but um, it's fun to uh, try different uh, styles. So what you need to do is you need to get yourself a little box cutter here or something to kind of cut a hole where the holes are to be. Um, you take the oops, take the model off first. Make a small incision. Uh, each spot. scissors and uh, find a spot to jam it in there just right just get the thing going Oops. Guns cut off, and then we've got these four holes in there. And that will be kind of your base. So let's get the screws back into place, like so. It's actually tipping now. Okay, so it was tipping this way before, but with this added weight removed, um, do a little bit of a test here. And now it's actually tipping just about right. It's about balanced, about right right now for this particular one. This one I'm worried because it's going to be heavier. So I might have to do a little configuration, use a different um, GoPro attachment that brings the camera out farther uh, to counterbalance the weight out here. But we will see on that. Okay, the next couple steps here. Uh, one is to put on a little tail onto the thing to uh, prevent the back end from oscillating back and forth like that. You don't want that to happen because then your, your, your footage will be all screwed up. So all you do is you take a, like a Dremel or a drill or something and take a drill if you want to drill it. Actually, GoPro is like this. You want it at the bottom, out on the end, out here. So I've already drilled it, by so it's kind of a little right there. Hole right in the center on the bottom part. So it's down here, um, like that. And then you have your light rope here, and you want it about 40 inches. Uh, don't forget to add a little bit for the uh, knot. You cut her off at about 40 inches right here. Wham! So we have to put a uh, 
make that up and since it is nylon, it'll melt it and it'll, it'll unravel on me. Then you basically, you tie this, you put this through the hole, like so. Already unraveling. And then tie it on to here, like that. So we're out in the yard here trying to figure out how long of a line to attach from the chase cam to the wing itself. Um, <clears throat> I've chosen to attach it to this line right here, which is about the fifth or sixth one from out on the end out there. Uh, and it's not the trailing edge. Some of the some people said you're supposed to attach it to the trailing edge, which is the brake. But I've been, I heard other people say don't attach it to the brakes, that could affect your braking. Uh, so I will attach it to this line right here. Um, and in order to figure out the length, what you want is you want it about a meter shorter than the line is, uh, the line that you're attaching it. So here's the line. So the only way to do this, it's not so easy with a ruler or a, a tape measure. It's not too easy to do it that way. So basically you just run it down here with the line itself. So you stretch this out. Get on there. And you kind of run the line along with it. Like so. It's like this. I don't know if you can see it now. You can probably see it now. Run the line along. And you follow it. That. Of course, it's going underneath. You go to here, have to kind of go under, under some stuff here, and then there's the actual where the risers are. So you wanted a meter less than that. Um, so you go back, and it's about right there, I'd say. Let's take this in, cut it off there, save a little bit for actually being able to, oops, oh, where'd that razor blade go? There you are. Save a little bit for knotting and some other stuff. You take and you cut it off, like so. Wham! There you got your line, the length of line you need to attach your chase cam. So after I cut the, the line off and I took the measuring tape onto it, you can see it ended up being about 16 and a half feet long. So we'll tie that thing up and see how it looks. So after attaching the line, you basically tie it onto here like so. On the old bracket, the metal L bracket. Uh, I'm going to use my old tactics uh, because since this is nylon line here, <clears throat> uh, I use some crazy glue to prevent that thing from coming undone. So I kind of crazy glue that there. Just the knot itself. So this is Cloudwalker PPG from the future. Um, I'm showing you the finished product. Um, I've already tested this. Uh, that's why I say I'm from the future that I tested this thing and it works really well um, for a homemade uh, chase cam. Um, really pleased with how it turned out. Um, so just to look over the finished product. Um, so here's basically the base bottle. It has four holes. Um, Four evenly displaced. Uh, the end is cut open, has a tail attached to it with a little bit heavier material. Um, I changed the bracket, um, the way the bracket is attached here, midway in between uh, putting this thing together. So as you can see, it comes down this way now. And that worked out very well. You can see it's very balanced when you hold it from the string. Um, the string itself is much thinner than the tail material. Um, 
as you can see, it's a lot thinner. It's very strong, but small and light. Um, it's kind of like the lines on your glider, the smaller lines on your glider. So uh, that works works out really well. Uh, it's tied right here. There's a couple holes in this L bracket. It goes through one out the other, and it's tied on there. And as you've seen in the video, I <clears throat> took some glue and glued that, knotted it tight because the um, this nylon, trying to knot nylon, it just comes apart all the time, so I just glued it. Uh, I have a line, uh, like I said in the video, for my wing, ended up being about 16 and a half feet. Uh, at the end, where you attach to your glider, um, there's this little S thing here, bends like that, and one end is attached to your glider, as seen in the video. And I leave it on there all the time, whether I'm using, using the chase cam or not. Um, and the other end, when this is on the glider, then I take, there's three little rubber bands here to use as uh, loose, uh, weak links, just in case the chase cam gets snagged in a tree. It doesn't tear my glider down. Um, so take these three little rubber bands, I have it looped on a, on a loop on the, um, the string. <clears throat> And you take them and you come up to your glider, this is attached to your glider, and you just kind of go like that and it's on. Um, I just set it down and I kind of drop this down into place. And you don't want to get it kind of tangled up, otherwise if you tangle around there, it goes sideways and gets all knotted up. Um, never happened to me yet, but uh, I've only had this up once and it worked really well. I got really lucky. so. If you place the chase cam like I did, about five uh, line attachments from the end of the glider, um, you need about this amount of uh, turning inward so that you can you can see yourself in the video and then see a lot of the, the ground and stuff. It looks really good. Uh, this ended up being almost perfectly um, the way you would want it centered, um, you know, from left to right, it's going like this, and the person is about two thirds over, and then the rest is is open for view of the, the backdrop. So it actually worked out really well at this angle, and then the up and down angle, you want it just a tiny bit upward from flat here, and that worked out perfect too. I just, it was miraculous. I got really lucky the first time. I just thought, oh, I'll try this this way, and it just ended up like pretty close to where you want it. Um, you'll see in the video. Um, but that's how this thing is constructed. And let's go and run some video of the thing in action. The first couple segments I'm showing here are just of me kiting uh, my wing with the chase cam attached just to see how it reacted to just slow kiting it reacted about how I figured it just kind of kind of hung there and kind of wobbled around but it looked really pretty balanced uh, as you can see and um, it looked like it, it was gonna work
Tom White. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you next time.